deer fed and happy. Late season, actually season's almost over in Ohio here. But this is the ticket, this is the way to get them to come in front of your blind like we've got behind us there or your tree stand. Hopefully you're in a blind. It's a little too cold for a tree stand right now in my opinion. But one of my favorite things to do is one bag of corn and one bag of bacon. Check this Exodus camera. See what's been on it. And what I really hope to do on this segment is give you a little insight on how I go about my baiting program in Ohio. And this can apply to other states as well that you're allowed to bait in. So, you know, one of the things I do do is, is I'll start September. And the reason why I do that is it gets them does coming. And as them does keep coming, they get on a, a pattern, almost a written program as to what time they're coming, when they're coming, how they're coming, what direction they're coming from. Every one of those trail camera pictures means something. They all tell a story. So always study them. Those does do mean something. Most cases, early season, those bucks, those big mature bucks that we're after aren't going to be hitting your feed or your food. So that's fine. Keep them there. That's a good thing that they're coming, but you're not going to be keying on them and trying to hunt, and hunt them bucks at that point in time. So what those does are doing, okay, is they're establishing a pattern. They might be coming in the mornings. They might be coming in the evenings. Hopefully the evenings. I like to hunt the evenings or especially early season, but what that does is it creates a pattern, okay? So as that doe keeps coming, it's only a matter of time before she turns hot, usually the first week in November, sometimes, you know, November 9th, 10th, 12th, that's when I like to be out there because that doe's gonna keep coming every single evening and it's only a matter of time before she has a buck on her tail. She won't switch up her pattern for the most part. Some cases she will, some cases, you know, it, it doesn't always work, nothing's always 100%, but I hunt off of probabilities and if you can stack the odds in your favor and make it probable, that that doe will come in then you might have your ticket you might have your way to fill your buck tag smoke a giant and end your season in november for some of us i actually tagged out early this year i tagged out or no it wasn't early actually it was december i tagged out early december on a really big old buck um happy to take him and get him off our farm but stacy is still hunting so I've been trying to implement this now I've been throwing the corn or the big tine feeding these deer at this particular spot all year long and we have yet to sit that blind um, these deer are coming in, in the evenings and in the mornings so it's it's kind of tough to hunt it it's actually a really really small area that we are allowed to hunt here it's actually about an acre uh, maybe two acres of woods but it butts up to some really big woods back in the back and across the road there is state game land. So it gets deer pushed over into here. And as of this time right now, I'm feeding about eight to nine does and one really nice, I'm gonna say he's a big two and a half year old or a three year old, as well as a really big deer as well. So I'm probably screwing myself and screwing Stacy essentially by being in here talking about this right now. But you know, this is something I really wanted to bring to you guys at home. This is something, you know, baiting is something, oh, everybody, uh, maybe I don't want to do it. I, it's cheating, whatever. Hey, you can say what you want, but you hear me huffing and puffing. This ain't easy. I can promise you that right now.